it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for October 2024. So welcome to October. Before we dive too far into the astrology for the month and what we can expect for the month ahead, I just want to bring to your attention that I've changed the zodiac forecast that I normally put out for the month. This would be the time when I'm going to be telling you, download your zodiac forecast, stay ahead of the information, stay ahead of the energy. Well, I'm going to recommend now that you download your zodiac forecast energy guide as I have shifted from the audio forecast into to the written form. I have made work booklets for all zodiac signs to work through the energy of the upcoming month, all of the astro events where that is going to take place in your life, where to kind of do the shadow work, where your time, your energy, your attention is needed. I've kind of amalgamated all of my existing resources into one. So that 30 page workbook should be assisting you through the energy shifts of the month ahead. So go ahead, download your e-guide and definitely stay ahead of the game. With that out of the way, let's talk about October. So according to the modern day calendar, October would be the 10th month. And if that were true, we would be dealing with the one vibration, which means that there's a new sense of self emerging. There's a new identity emerging. And of course, we've been working on trying to anchor in this new version of self for the last couple of months. And that one energy is also very indicative of new beginnings, initiating a new path, a new direction. But of course, we're still very much in eclipse season. What that new beginning is, is still kind of elusive to us. We are going to be receiving a lot of insight, a lot of information throughout the month of October, especially once we get out of this eclipse energy to help us kind of put the pieces together, so to speak. Now, I think it's an interesting dynamic to realize that the moon will be shifting out of the Virgo energy, moving into Libra energy on the very first day of the month. Why is that interesting, you may ask? Well, because the moon in Virgo was giving us a little bit of a reflection, a little bit of a reminder of what we were focused on throughout Virgo season, which was we were focused on the problems. We had to really hone in on where there was craziness and chaos in our lives, where there were issues, because we were in the mood to address them, to fix them, to heal them, to adjust them, to improve them, to repair them. But of course, then we got thrown into eclipse energy. We have no power and control under this eclipse influence. And so the transition with the moon moving into Libra energy is highly suggestive that October is going to be about the realizations that we've had in Virgo energy and the energy, the effort, the information, the details that we are now gaining throughout the month on how we're going to bring some of the situations and circumstances into balance, into peace, into harmony, into a term of acceptance. Now, that acceptance word is a big deal. We had a lot of things thrown at us under that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy that we're still very much under the influence of. Again, a reminder, there's an astro class devoted to this particular eclipse edition axis that we will be working on from now until 2027. But soul contracts were up for renewal. And in some cases, some got terminated, some got voided out. Some are still awaiting the approval to actually pop off and get initiated. And so dealing with the one energy of October, and of course, dealing with the seven energy of Libra season, we're definitely in for a major change, a major transformation where relationship dynamics are concerned. And once we move into Scorpio energy, which will give us the vibration of eight, in combination with October's one energy, we're going to see major shifts in the physical structures of our physical realms, most importantly, relationship dynamics. Shit has yet to hit the fan. We are going to go through this new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy that is going to add to the situation, give us the information and details that we will be working with in order to fix, heal, and resolve some of the issues that are very much in our face, but still kind of confusing under this eclipse energy. So we're coming into the month and on the second, we have this new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy. So this is going to be popping off at 10 degrees. There is a astro class specifically for this particular eclipse event available on my Patreon that will be live 3 p.m. 
September 30th, if you'd like to join. That is definitely going to help kind of understand the season, the cycle that we're wrapping up. Of course, we've been on this Aries and Libra and Axis for the last year and a half, working on the relationship dynamics, breaking away from codependent relationships, from people pleasing, from putting other people's thoughts, ideas, opinions ahead of our own, putting other people's wants, dreams, and desires ahead of our own. And of course, that North Node in Aries energy is trying to get us independent, try to get us to work on the relationship dynamic within thyself. So this eclipse, again, we are in the, let's call it chapter of confusion and delusion. We are still not aware of the full information, the full picture, the full details that we will be working with in this next karmic chapter. But typically speaking, a solar eclipse is going to be adding something to our lives, adding the information, the perspective, the details, the tools in order to bring peace and harmony back into our lives, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. October 9th, we're going to have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, going retrograde at 21 degrees in Gemini energy. So Jupiter entered into this Gemini energy May of 2024. And this has been about expanding upon our information, our mental plane, our, in, our knowledge, our ability to discern the truth from lies. We have been really taking a good look at what it is that we've learned, whether or not we're actually integrating that into our everyday practices. And because Jupiter now going retrograde, and again, anytime any planet is going retrograde, the energy gets internalized, meaning we're no longer going to have the options and the opportunities for growth, for expansion in our external realm. Now we need to slow down. We need to reflect, review, kind of rearrange our plans, our goals. We need to revisit old plans, old details. We need to reflect upon what it is that we've already learned, where it is that we're failing to integrate said information into day-to-day -day practices. The amount of growth, the amount of evolving that we are about to do with Jupiter in this retrograde is going to be profound. A lot of the things that we thought we knew, we now no longer know. A lot of the things that we didn't know, we are now starting to realize. And because of that, again, Gemini energy representing the twins, we have a lot of back and forth to do in order for us to arrive at a sweet spot in understanding on where we want to build and create new options, new opportunities to actually put forth the wisdom, the information, the knowledge that we've already gained from tough love life lessons. October 11th, we're going to have Pluto, the great transformer himself, go direct at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. So this is going to be the last time that we are going to experience Pluto direct in this Capricorn energy. That 29 critical crisis karmic degree should have been illuminating to us while retrograde where the power struggles are still alive and well, either within yourself, within relationship dynamics, or of course, against the systems, the structures of society. Either way, with Pluto now going direct, we are going to have the ability to take the power and control back over our lives, especially once we get away from eclipse energy, and actually play the crappy hand that we may have been dealt to the best of our abilities. That Capricorn energy are the physical structures of our lives. So again, routines, relationships, goals, ambitions, careers, money matters, everything that you have been building over the last 15 years, now is the time to see what is going to stick. We have the opportunity to totally disassemble, to deconstruct, to totally destroy the system structures and foundations that are no longer supporting us that are no longer encouraging us that we are no longer wanting to pour into into this next chapter so pluto going direct is going to give us all a little bit of boldness and bravery a little bit of power and control to really make the changes the major transformations needed in our physical realm in order to put the past in the past and in some cases close the door and nail that sucker shut and to put into perspective where it is that we are clearing the space in order for us to build new things in the place of the things that of course 
belong to the old version of self and the old realm, the old reality that that old version of self has created. October 13th, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, moving into Scorpio energy. So this is where we get to blend our intellect with our intuition. Of course, our thoughts, the way that we kind of look at the world, it all becomes a little bit skeptical. We put our detective hats on. We're asking a lot of questions because we need a lot of answers before we're able to make major moves. There is an intensity that comes with Scorpio energy because we have to do some shadow work. We have to address the unconscious limitations of our mind, preventing us from actually busting out of old patterns and behaviors and creating new ones. When Mercury was in Libra energy, of course, we were trying to find peace and harmony and balance. We were trying to look at things from all angles, see both sides of the coin. But we were trying to stay in the light, fluffy, shallow end, if you will, of our thoughts. In Scorpio energy, we are doing a deep dive into the deepest, darkest parts of our psyche, of our mind, of our inner dialogue, of our inner narrative. We understand that life isn't fair. We understand that some shady things have happened to us, that we've been kind of dealt some not so nice hands in the past. We understand that we have the power and control to basically make lemonade out of all the lemons that have been thrown at us. We seek new truth. We seek new meaning. We seek new connection. We want to unearth all of those hidden eat details. We want to unearth all of the things that we've casted so far away from our awareness because we weren't prepared to deal with them. And so we are in observer mode, but we also want to really understand the underlying motivations of ourselves and of other people. And so a lot of the epiphanies that are going to come at us are going to be super intense, very profound, and it's going to set the stage, if you will, for a major change, a major transformation of our focus, of our ideas, of our thoughts, of our opinions, of our own truths. On October 17th, we have two back-to-back astro events taking place. The first one is the full moon in Aries energy, which is popping off at 24 degrees. Now, this is officially going to close the door on the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy that we will be under the influence of until this full moon in Aries. Typically speaking, we are kind of being returned back to normal moon programming. This full moon is the halfway point in this astrological year. And you best believe that we are going to see some full illuminations of hidden information and details that didn't make sense to us through eclipse season coming right in our face. And of course, the Aries and Libra axis still is this continuation of the karmic story that began about a year and a half ago that will continue to kind of take place and kind of wrap up a storyline while we get thrown into a new storyline in early 2025. This is going to be a realization on where, again, the ever-changing landscape of the relationship dynamics now has a standing that Aries energy is about what I want, what I need, what I desire, while the Libra energy is about what we want, what we need, what we desire. This is going to be putting this new version of self on spotlight. This is going to kind of I'm going to say reignite a fire, a spark, a flame within us to be a little bit more aggressive and assertive to go after what it is that we want, what it is that we need, what it is that is going to change the game for us, especially with the path, the options, the opportunities that we are now going to be creating for ourselves moving forward. So, of course, this is going to really put into perspective where we have to kind of compromise again honoring our own personal goals, our own personal wants, needs, and desires, and again, still considering the commitments that we've made to other people. There is going to be a certain realization on where it is that we do have to be a little bit more independent, where it is that we have to do some of these things on our own, because this is our own soul contract that we essentially are trying to fulfill. 
So the second thing that is going to take place with this October 17th day is just after the full moon in Aries pops off, we're going to have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, move into Sagittarius energy, which is a very interesting dynamic. First of all, she's coming out of Scorpio energy, so she has gone through a major change, a major transformation of her heart space, of her worth, of her values, of the people, places, and things that she wants to continue to pour into and have in her life. But she illuminates herself to a new truth on what makes her happy, what brings her a sense of joy, what and who contributes to her overall safety, security, and stability in life. Well, in Sagittarius energy, Sag kind of acts like the light at the end of the dark tunnel that happens to be Scorpio energy. And of course, Sag energy ruled over by Jupiter is super optimistic, super confident, and we really want more of the happiness, of the joy, of the fun. So Venus moving into Sag, she just wants to experiment. She wants to explore. She has a new lease on life. She's seeing the bigger, broader picture of why we had to go through what it is that we just went through. And especially coming out of some of these eclipse energies, this is like we feel free to go on a new quest, to go on a new adventure, especially where our romantic interactions are concerned. Now, there's a straightforwardness, a bluntness that comes with that Sag energy. So when it comes to matters of the heart, we have zero filter. And essentially, we are kind of looking to lighten the vibe. We're looking to let our hair down, to have a little bit more fun. And although, you know, relationships are kind of Venus's major focus, we're also focused on where it is that we need a little bit more independence, a little bit more freedom to actually go after our dreams, our visions, our goals. So we're going to be testing our new belief system, let's call it, on how it is that we have the ability to give birth to, bring to life, to create a better situation for ourselves on the day to day. The Venus energy is very connected to routines, relationships, and money matters. And Sagittarius energy, of course, just wants to have fun, wants to explore, wants to experiment, wants to just see what else is out there. The last thing that we have going on here in October is on the 22nd, the sun will be moving into Scorpio. So Scorpio season is the, I'm going to say, most hated season by all the signs. Even Scorpio people uh, tend to kind of dislike their own season. Why? Well, first of all, Scorpio energy is where we're leaving the materialistic realm behind to do a deep dive in our soul and in our spirit. The major changes, the major transformations that we want to take place in our external realm have to happen in our inner realm first and foremost. Scorpio energy is how we take the darkness and turn it into light, how we take our pain and turn it into power. We have to be focused on what we truly desire. And when we find out what it is that we actually want, we actually need, we actually desire in life, then we get faced with the fears the doubts, the insecurities that prevent us from going after said desires. So there's a certain level of depth that many people aren't comfortable with in Scorpio season that we all need to go through. We have this want, need, and desire for a new level of connection, of intimacy, and especially coming out of this eclipse season where relationship dynamics are all the way up in the air and we don't know where those cards are about to fall as of yet. We are definitely going to be rearranging our time, energy, and attention to pour into the people that, of course, we have deemed post-eclipse season are still going to be around for the long term, for the big picture, for the big vision, for the big dream. We also want to get to the matter of fact. We want to get to the truth of the matter, if you will, in Scorpio season. And so again, detective hats are on. We're doing a deep dive within ourselves. We're kind of picking situations and circumstances apart but we're really relying on our intuition. Again, it's a water sign, so emotions, instincts are very, very strong. And although we may kind of encounter some very dark parts of self or dark parts within other people, we get to see the truth of who it is that we are, either within ourselves 
or in the people that we are actually attracting to us. This can get pretty dark with jealousy, with power, with vindictiveness, with a lot of taboo secrecies. Um, but it's also a beautiful thing to kind of be reborn again. That's what Scorpio energy is all about. We go through the death and destruction process only to be reborn and resurrected once again. So with all of that being said, let's do a deep dive into what October actually has to offer, what this is going to mean for us. And of course, we have to get things started with this new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy.